trying to pass. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Education meeting for December 4th. Whoa, I spilled my water right away. Uh, first thing we have is roll call. Colburn? Here. Coleman? Here. Edie? Here. Decliner? Here. Eggmeister? Here. Lewison? Here. Herman? Here. You're all present. Uh, Mr. President, I move to add item uh, 8.4 Human Resources Software Purchase and approve the amended agenda. Seconded by Dave. All those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. All right. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, well, it looks like we have a special recognition, but uh, he has not arrived yet, so I think we can move on. But uh, um, at this point, though, I would like to uh, take a pause to uh, uh, make a comment. You know, words cannot express the tremendous grief that uh, we've experienced from the loss of a student um, that happened on Thanksgiving Day. Um, Mara, F Mara Furry passed away on Thanksgiving Day. Um, she's a sixth grader um, at Northview. She was a super leader, very active in girls on the run. She loved to read and reach out to others. And her smile and helpfulness and friendly demeanor will dearly be missed. And there is no footprint too small to leave an imprint on the world. So I'd please observe a moment of silence. Thank you. Okay, so we will move on to uh, consent agenda. Or, I'm sorry, this is the point where we uh, recognize uh, visitors and citizen comments. Anybody wishing to speak to the board about anything that's not on the agenda, you can do that now. Um, you have three minutes and be timed by the board clerk. Anybody wishing to speak to the board? Okay, seeing none. Now we'll move on to consent agenda. November 20th. 2019 minutes, consideration of bills, HR report, donations and grants, financial audit, and course proposals and changes. And then we always like to highlight the, uh, the donations and grants. That. We have a $500 cash donation from the Greater Manhattan Community Foundation, Tyler Dowling Memorial Fund for USD 33 for the Fit Closet. $1,000 cash donation from Cowboy Running Company to Manhattan High School for Fellowship for Christian Athletes. $697 cash donation from Manhattan Rotary Club to Manhattan High School for Interact Club for $2,197. Jardine. I'm going to accept the consent agenda. Daryl's pretty fast on that tonight. Darryl. Second by Daryl. All those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. Okay, and in high school student council. Hello, guys. You know the drill. I am Lexi Feather, I am the student body treasurer. I didn't realize it wasn't on. I'm Will Banster. I'm the student body vice president. My name is Elizabeth Kim. I'm the student body secretary. Um, so this past week, November 20th, we had, or I guess not this past week, November 20th, we had Mr. MHS. It was very successful. Alan Zhang was crowned Mr. MHS. And Mr. MHS is put on by BPA, AFS, and Student Council, for anyone who didn't know that. Um, we made roughly $1,500 from ticket sales and donations. And then um, total from Student Council, we raised $488 just to ourselves, and that's what each club would have gotten. And then 
The blood drive was November 12th. The Red Cross goal was 60 pints. And we came through with 65 pints donated. Um, the student council goal was 80 signups. And we had roughly 95 signups or walk-ins. Our fundraising is we have done a coat check fundraiser at the Showcase Choir and Jazz Band concert. And that one didn't have as much money as we hoped, but we got a total of $9 after Choir and Jazz Band got some as well. Um, the goal is to do these at every concert or event that we are allowed to. And then another fundraising is we are going to have a raffle to raffle off the parking spot next to the SRO. And um, tickets will be sold starting December 9th for a dollar each. And it will be for students only. Sorry to faculty. <laughs> and we got a sign, thank you to Mr. Dorse, to be able to put up there. And it says, reserved for a student raffle winner, Stuco Stubbs spot. And then for service, we are partnering with interpersonal skills class to collect non-perishable food items for the bread basket. This is done through, we're doing this through a raffle and they are, when they bring in a non-perishable food item, they can enter to win one of the prizes that have been donated from various local businesses. Um, junior class student council has been planning for prom. Their latest um, issue has been discussing themes that will be voted for during advisory. Um, they are Enchanted Forest with the colors forest green, blush pink, and gold with the song Love Story by Taylor Swift. Um, the next theme being Met Gala with red, black, and gold, uh, the song being Paparazzi by Lady Gaga. Um, the next theme, and uh, last but not least, Night in Paris, Teal, Navy, and Silver, with the song Lovey and Rose by Louis Armstrong. For their recent community service project, they went to Meadowlark Hills to set up a Thanksgiving dinner for the residents there. They collected more than 250 items for the bread basket, so very successful. Our Manhattan High Drama Department uh, just had auditions for A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder last night and the previous night. Callbacks are tomorrow and Friday. They also had an adjudicator come watch the play of She Kills Monsters, and they received high enough marks to qualify them for the Kansas State Thespian Festival. Um, uh, choir and Blue Notes Jazz Band had their showcase concert on November 14th, and the Pops Choir also went on their elementary school tour. We didn't give much thought to how we decided to set up here and the order we're presenting. But the journalism team went to the National High School Journalism Con Conference. Um, Meredith Comez, so her sister Sophia Comez, and Chris Long all placed nationally um, at that. Stuco, additionally, we had our club feast last night, which was in uh, MHS West Campus, so clubs were invited to bring food. We even had a platter of shrimp. Uh, unfortunately, it was frozen solid, so <laughs> none of us got to eat the shrimp. <clears throat> and the theme was black, silver, and gold. We hope that next year we'll get a little better turnout than we did, but we are pretty happy with the amount of notice that clubs got. We also, this Friday, we have the Foreign Film Festival, which is being hosted by the French Club, German Club, and the Asian Student Union, and the Spanish Club and Hispanic Student Union. Um, the mission for this event is a can for the bread basket, so um, the donations will go to the bread basket. And finally, that brings me to sports. Um, football season concluded with the team going to the third round at the 6A state tournament, and they played derby, and sadly, we didn't pull that one through and we lost. Um, but Tribe did organize a spirit bus that went and was funded for by the Booster Club. For current winter sports, um, they've started on November 18th and basketball already had their varsity and JV go to the Hayes basketball tournament. Um, actually, that'll be this weekend. 
and then the freshmen have their first quad tournament this next weekend as well. Swim Dive are currently at their first meet, and it seemed like it was going well last time I was texting with them. And then Wrestling, they will have their first meet this weekend in Gardner, Kansas. There is also a band concert tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Do you guys have any questions for us? Dave. Uh, do you have any times on the, on the film festival? 3.30. 3 <clears throat> yeah. I believe it's the Little Theater. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Tricia, please <coughs> join us. Good evening, everybody. All right, where to begin? Sorry, I got done fast. Okay, um, <laughs> okay, College Hill. Um, construction, if you haven't driven by there, construction has started on Monday. So, um, MCM is the dirt work, earthwork contractor, so they started moving dirt. Um, they will be done actually on Saturday with a building pad. Um, if you're not familiar with the building pad, um, uh, they come in, they create a level surface, they com um, compact it to make sure it um, meets compaction as far as solid. Um, they will be done with that on Saturday, so that's good. We're moving right along. Um, then the district, if you don't know, I, you guys put a plug in this morning. We are we'll, we will be having a um, groundbreaking ceremony on Monday at 1030 out at the site. So all, all operations will cease <laughs> while we're doing this. Um, hopefully it'll be a little warmer than what they say in the forecast. So um, Oliver Brown Elementary, hope that's okay to say. <laughs> um, so currently, <laughs> sure. A little preemptive. Anyway, uh, the project's currently out for bid. Um, so Hutton is the lead um, construction manager on that. As you remember, it's a BHS Hutton team, but Hutton is the lead on this one. Um, so it's currently out for bid. They will, um, they're asking for their bids to be returned back to them on December 23rd, um, right before break. They will then um, compile those bids. They'll go through them. And then on January 15th, we will present those bids to facilities and growth. And then the next week we'll um, bring those bids to the board providing everything goes well and everything's under budget and everything like that. Eisenhower and Anthony Middle School, they met again today. Um, unfortunately, I was at the high school and Eric um, went to the middle school meeting. I was told that they did have to add another hallway for exiting um, due to the number of students that were going to be in the building and the number of uh, just, you know, the population of the building. So they had to have another exiting um, means out of the building. This project's still going out for bid in January. Um, we will bring those as well um, to you February 12th to Facilities and Growth and bring those to the full board on February 19th um, as well for the um, GMP. Um, as a reminder, when those middle school bids go out, um, the city will also be bidding out the rec centers as well. So there'll be four pretty large projects um, on the streets with this, within the city limits um, out for bids. So. Hopefully with the economy of scale, um, this is McCallum Gordon's doing all four of them. Hopefully we'll see some good numbers with dirt work and concrete and masonry as well. So Keith Knoll Maintenance Center. Um, unfortunately, we've kind of sat with all this good weather. We were waiting on a permit. Um, kind of got a little surprise with um, some fees that we weren't expecting with sewer and water. Um, they were a little over $18,000. Um, so we had to kind of work through that issue. Um, but they did pick up the permit yesterday. Um, we were waiting also on some shop drawings to come back, be approved from the structural engineers on the metal building. We finally got those back today. Um, can't, can't pour concrete without knowing where the anchor bolts go for the building. So 
that's a little, yeah, important. Um, we do have rebar coming tomorrow, so hopefully they can start tomorrow. And if, um, if they can get the anchor bolts from Fastenal here in town, they can proceed with that. Um, they're not specialized bolts by any means. So hopefully we can see some ground being broke and we have some footings going down. Um, Marlette, um, we had our- That's a good question though. Well, yeah. <clears throat> don't we have the money approved for the pay for those fees or why, yeah. why was that a holdup? Honestly, well, when you when the board chose to go to the city, they waived only inspection fees and um, permitting fees. I don't think anybody really thought about the fees okay. for water and sewer. And these fees are pretty high, honestly. And I, I think they actually shocked McCown and Gordon because they weren't expecting them either. Um, they knew that there was always a tap fee when you tap from. Um, our meter into their stuff, there's always a tap fee, and they were expecting about $2,500 to $3,500, but not $18,000. So that really shocked them. Um, we've, we've taken care of it, but now I've sent out an email to everybody else and said, hey, by the way, here's the chart you need to look at. Here's the, what they're going by, and basically water charges, what water charges, the sewer charges as well um, by the diameter of the line. So a two-inch line is... $9,975. Water side, sewer side. Surely so. it's not a two inch sewer line. Uh, it's not, but they go by the, the water line. <laughs> okay. Thing. All right. It's a water line fee. Gotcha. It goes right. over. But um, there's justification that the city, the reason why they did that. So, okay. Yeah. So we'll cover it from now on. <laughs> it's going to be in the part of the planning with the um, estimates and stuff. So does that answer? Yes. Okay. Yep. Sorry about that. That's no, all right. Just curious. Yeah. Um, Marlette, we had our first um, building committee last night um, as well attended. Um, thank you to Sheila for getting her folks there. Um, Clint presented what was, pre um, was proposed in the bond for their building. So he had some great, um, bless you. <laughs> He had the building plans, he had the um, <clears throat> uh, graphic, the um, site plan as well. So we kind of talked about parking, um, what do we do for buses, um, what was proposed for the inside of the building, for the EDBD room, such as that. So it was a really good conversation that we had. Um, people asked lots of good questions. So um, we gave them a little homework to go back to the staff and say, hey, what do you see for uh, the renovations of the the hall that didn't get renovated. What do you see for the parking? What do you see, you know, circulation wise? So some good um, feedback was given and we gave them some homework to, and we will meet, um, I think after the holidays, I think we decided. No, 17th, you're right, 17th, I'm sorry. We're meeting December 17th. Lee, um, we will have a meeting next Monday on Lee. Again, it's basically two parking lots one on the east, one on the west. Um, so they're still exploring another option on how many entrances, exits on Lee Street for the public and for the buses. But we still are looking at having the buses have a pull off on Lee in front of the school. So Bergman will have our next meeting um, next week, next Monday, um, to continue to go over where the storm shelter might live, where the parking lot might live. Um, so we haven't done that since the last board meeting that we had. Jamie and I, um, Gregory, are working on uh, pilot programs for furniture for the elementary schools. So we have two schools that have volunteered to help us, and that's Amanda Arnold and Northview. So we, we, were, we were trying to be overzealous, but we were hoping at Christmas time we could flip some furniture and get some pilot furniture in there, but that's just not going to happen. So it's probably going to be more probably around spring break, um, but we've had two companies that have agreed to um, pilot some furniture for us that we think would be furniture good for Oliver Brown. So, we, But we want the teachers to try it out because it's going to be teacher desks, it's going to be storage, um, but tables and chairs and soft seating and stuff like that. So we want the kids to give it a good try and um, see what it, where it falls out. So that's kind of what we're up to. Questions? That was easy. Okay, thank you. It is yeah. a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. Yes. Carla. Oh, yeah, I forgot about it. We were at the high school today, so we had quite a leadership meeting today. Um, we met with the athletic, um, we met with Mr. Marsh and three of his coaches. So we talked about the gym, we talked about the wrestling, 
um, proposed wrestling addition, the existing wrestling, um, how do we fit all that stuff in? So they brought some good conversation in and made us um, rethink a bunch of things. Then we also had a building committee update. So uh, Whitney was really good to update where we stand with the West, um, the West site plan. We talked about phasing of the high school. So there was a lot of good conversation about how we're going to phase this project. Um, what are we going to do with football? What are we going to do with wrestling? What are we going to do with the band? Because when they want to start is next August, you know, August of 20. So we do have to find places for people to go practice. Um, we want people to be safe and we don't want students in the area. So um, what do we do about parking? Parking is going to become a premium um, when we start the construction. So it's going to be two, it's basically two construction projects. You're going to have one on the west and one on the east. Um, obviously, the one on the west is going to get done before the east. So there's still a lot of conversation about the logistics and how things are going to fall out and what affects what and what affects this. And there, remind, remember that there will be construction on the inside as well as we remodel some spaces for um, grade level administration areas. Um, but we also have to tie the buildings together. So... Um, there's lots, still lots and lots of conversations to, ha to be had um, on how all that process has, but we, it's no time like the present to start talking about those. So we still have lots of conversations to go. And we plan on, we will be bringing the design development estimate to facilities and growth on February 12th and also to the board on February 19th as well. And then right after the board meeting, um, probably on the 20th, we think, we'll take it to the staff, um, show them exactly where we stand um, with the design of the high school, and then talk also about the phasing, uh, where we sit with the, with the project as well. So. Okay. Okay. Has everybody responded to Eric on the groundbreaking, if he can be there or not? Yeah. Just let me know tonight, or if you're in limbo, let me know that too. And Okay. I will have hard hats um, for everybody as well. So can't be on site without a hard hat. Still have the same gold shovels from the last time? We, we do have the same gold shovels. <laughs> right. They've been updated. <laughs> new, new coat of paint on them. <laughs> so we're good. So. Can we dig in the new packed down area? <laughs> yeah. I think they might have a big pile of dirt for you. So, uh, <laughs> so we're excited about it. Awesome. Be our third project to start. So, so any, anything else? All right, great. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Dr. Wade is still in his meeting, so Aaron, you are oh. up. What? No. Oh, you. Well, we, unless Aaron wants oh, to go okay. first. You want to go first? No, it's okay. Okay. Well, we might end up splitting if he comes back. Why don't you go first? <laughs> we'll do that. Uh, Lou's going to do part of Dr. Wade's as oh, well. Oh, okay. So, I'm sorry. I didn't. But I I, let's not split that. We'll let Aaron go. Do you need your video? Yes. <laughs> Good evening, Aaron Meyer Gambrell, NEA Manhattan, Ogden. Um, we'll go ahead and get everything synced and pulled up. Okay, hopefully it pulls it all up. Um, as it does the countdown, I'll go ahead and get started with some information. So uh, we have our Celebrating What's Right. Our individual to be spotlighted will be Deborah Shapaw. She'll be at our next meeting. Um, now that interviews are starting to be finalized for that Master Teacher of the Year, we're finally in a place to be able to start rolling out all the wonderful candidates. So some upcoming district events. Um, we have the Martin Luther King Jr. Art and Writing Contest that's going on December 7th at the Manhattan Public Library. I know a lot of the schools in the district are participating. We have the KASB Conference next weekend in Wichita. It's this weekend. It's, like it's this weekend yes. in like Friday, yeah. like this. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I don't know if Steve is here. Um, St Steve, we need to talk. <laughs> I was just there. <laughs> I got 
this. I'm a professional. I got this. Um, tryouts for the Wolf are occurring um, in two weeks. So that is the new sideline representation for the MHS High School. The application to try out to be the Wolf is due on December 16th, with the actual tryout day being the 18th. When I kind of saw that, I was kind of excited. I I thought that sounds very fascinating, and if I was a high schooler, I know I'd be very intrigued to, um, to participate. Uh, finals for the high school are going to be on December 19th and December 20th. We have some early childhood screenings that are going on here in Riley County. Uh, that'll be December 20th. It'll be from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Peace Lutheran. Finally, uh, not finally, we have winter break coming up on December 23rd through January 5th with professionals returning on January 3rd. We have a certified employee float day on December 23rd. And then finally, going on currently across the street at the high school is the social media and the law conference through the CONSA Uniserve. So lots going on currently in the district. So for our next two Celebrating What's Right, I have Deborah Shapaw scheduled for December 18th. I'm looking forward to hopefully spotlighting uh, Sam Cool on January 15th and then continuing to get some more individual scheduling going on down the line. January 22nd. I will make the change for January 22nd and email her. Thank you. Um, just to double check, because obviously I'm having date difficulties tonight. There is no Board of Education meeting on the 1st because it's the 1st. Does that mean that there's one on the 2nd? 8th and the 22nd. I will be sure to update my calendar to reflect these changes. And we have lots of wonderful individuals to be celebrated at the Celebrating What's Right. I know I'm really looking forward to spotlighting all the amazing amazing educators that we we have in our district so tonight's just kind of short and sweet because we're going to really kind of start rolling out a lot of our amazing educators in the coming weeks that we have here in the district any questions for me okay well i'm going to go write sub plans and um <laughs> And I will see you all. Yeah, don't you have arrangements made for her to be there? Okay. If I can get a sub. <laughs> Feel a cold coming on. <laughs> okay, then, yes, Lou, please. Are you plugging in there? As, as Aaron said, Dr. Wade's across the street at the social media and the law conference, so I probably think he wasn't anticipating us being this far along yet, but I'm sure he'd be happy with it. But I know one of the things he planned to do was have Lou give a budget update, and Lou will kind of tell you why. Um, the this point of the year, we, we get some information back to us that we can start adjusting our plan from what we originally put out in August. So Lou's going to kind of give an overview of that and where we're at. Um, some of this is information for the board for those of you who are going to Wichita this weekend that you'll I'm sure you'll hear from Mark Tallman and and some of the KSB people as, a, as far as the legislative update and some of those kind of items but wanted to share some things with you the first thing um, and this I don't expect people to read this and so on but this is a cover letter that comes with what's called a legal max letter from KSD school finance We'll get four or five of these in the course of a year. We get one now, and this reflects the, the large numbers that Eric reports after the September 20th count date and how they flow into the school finance formula. And so after we turn in what's called the SO66, which is that September 20th report on the enrollment information, then we'll get this and we compare that against what we adopted in August, our published budget. And so, Again, you won't be able to read all these, but, the, but it, these are, for example, column four is the adjusted enrollment. That is our base <coughs> enrollment, FTE, if you will. That one didn't change because that's based on last year's audited number. 
the others can change throughout all the various things in there. Uh, but you get down in the very bottom row, column 38, third from the left, um, Legal Max General Fund. So that's based on our the SO66 numbers. That's our Legal Max General Fund Authority right now. Now that has to go through the audit in the spring. Then we'll get another Legal Max letter. And then we get two or three late May, early June, if special ed categorical aid changes after we file a local effort report and we get before we finally get June 15th and get a actual final legal max and know what our final numbers are for the budget sometimes so there's several rounds of this and I just wanted to share this with you again don't expect to be able to digest all of it but the LOB also changes a little bit in in line with that but the important part of it this flows into the spreadsheet that we've seen before that is the worksheet that mirrors the formula. Again, this is too small to I know get into the details of it, but the important part of it down to the bottom right, let me see if I can get out of this a little bit, go a little larger. <coughs> down here to the bottom right, the 60,000 number here, this is the difference from what we published and what our projected legal max is now for general fund. We're down about 60,000. That's pretty good. You, you want to be over, and then we're down about 32,000 for the local option budget. So between the two of them, it's a difference of about $92,000. You don't want to come in under where you have to republish and that type of thing. So we were over a little bit, but we were within $100,000. That's when you're doing a budget our size, that's pretty good, shooting it pretty close. So Eric and I felt pretty good about that. We'll see how it changes as we, as we, you know, traverse on through the year at this point. The next one we want to look at is uh, consensus revenue estimates from earlier in November. Basically, the, the estimates were for fiscal year 20 and 21. They were increased by a combined total of $525.5 million. We haven't had that kind of good news for a long time. <laughs> that's, that's great news. Uh, for, for the rest of this year, the current fiscal year, 2020, up about $220 million and change. And for 21, $305 million. That's great news. And what it means is hopefully they'll be able to fund the finance formula that was approved by the court without going in the hole. I mean, there was some projections and, and Mark always has his charts and things and so on that would have showed us, you know, in the outlying years, two, three years out with capers increases and so on, would have been significantly in the hole if we didn't have increased revenue. The concern is, you know, will some members of the legislature see this as an opportunity to cut taxes, to do other things, to try and because the revenue projection is, is so good. And, and I think Governor Kelly made some comments, you know, that we're still not out of the woods yet in those outlier years. We still need to be fiscally responsible going forward. So, but there's already some talk about whether it's food sales tax, whether it's the income tax things, the changes at the federal level, there'll be some conversation about that that anticipate going forward. One that we want to make sure we f focus on with the, uh, our legislative group when they're here before the next meeting is high density at risk waiting. It's a part of the formula that was added three years ago when we kind of came back to the old formula. And the, the concern with this is down here at the bottom of this first page, item five, provisions of the subsection expire July 1, 2020. So it's got a sunset date. High density at risk in last year's figures, they don't have this year's figures, but in last year's 1819 figures, statewide, equaled about $51 million. So if they don't renew this, you know, again, again, somebody might think, okay, well, it's a chance to try and save the state some money and maybe do some other things, whether it's higher ed, whether it's social services, you know, all the other things that are on their plate. Somebody, but, but you know. You want to explain what that applies to. Yeah, the high, the high density at risk, you have your regular head count for at risk, and then if you have a building, you get to, you get to analyze your, your attendance centers by location. And if you're between 35 and 50%, you get one, another percentage for that student count. Or if you're above 50%, then you get another figure. So it's, again, a weighting factor that goes into it, but it's in addition to the base at-risk head, head count. That's at 45%. 
For us, it equates to about $266,000 and change in the charts in there uh, that, that shows you that. So it, 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 you know, that's five teachers, basically. If you look at the chart, and I'll, I'll scan through this pretty quick, there's where it's about 51 million. This was in last year's numbers. The number I figure I've highlighted, we jump through here a couple of pages real quick. Yeah, for us, 266,144. Again, this was last year's number. If you're Wichita, this will get your attention. 14,343,000 and change. Kansas City, Kansas is another 6 million. I mean, those two districts combined for over 20 million of the 51 million. And of course, remember, Kansas City, Kansas was one of the districts, lead districts in the Gannon case. So if this goes away, Mr. Dennis has already made a statement that we'll be right back across the street, right back in court. So hopefully this doesn't happen and they realize that and that, you know, this was part of the formula that was approved by the court and they'll just either take the date out or extend it two or three years or something, but that's one we need to be mindful of, make sure that, that we talk to our legislators about next time. Um, yeah, there's six point, almost 6.7 for Kansas City, Kansas. And the last one that I had in there to share with you was just, this is a form that we have to submit that has our, we get a, a final actual mill levy uh, statement from the county and that we have to file a report with KSD, and this is the form that does that. You can see, I'll move it up, to Diane's behind her a little bit, but what we published was 62.115 mills, and the actual mill rate became 62.137, so it went up 22 one thousandths of a mill, you know, and that's just what causes that is the estimated property valuation didn't come in quite as high as the actual didn't come in quite as high as the estimate that we have to build a budget on initially. So that's what causes that minor fluctuation. How long is that, <clears throat> excuse me, how long is that the adult ed stay on there? This is the last year okay. for that. But the agreement we had with MATC <clears throat> was, was that we would have that for two years. This is the second of those two years. So that, that one will go away after this fiscal year. Good question. And that's all I have unless there's questions for how many of you? Dave. <clears throat> So I'm kind of back. I apologize. I don't have the page number. Well, just those back, first couple of pages, particularly that report. I guess on ninety, it's ninety-eight in my book. Is that? Is this some of this Legal Max. part of the? Legal. Is some of this from the new funding formula? I don't remember these reports as you were describing. Yes. These. I meant, we may, may not have shared them with you before, but yes, this has always been a part of the process okay. that we get these letters from KSD and preliminary legal max. Then we'll have an audited legal max. Then you'll have an adjusted and then you'll have a preliminary final and then a final. Okay. <laughs> like, like, like I said, there's about yeah. <laughs> probably a little closer than what we used to get to. So I, I would say a little, a little more accurate at, at, Previously, before they started taking the base number on your audited enrollment from last year, there was just a lot more give and take in, in there, and now it's a little more zoned in. So I feel pretty good going into the audit, at least that we're as close as we are. Okay. All right. Thanks, Lou. Thank you. Anything you want to add to the superintendent's report? I didn't have anything this time around. I'm, right. sure, I'm sure he does, but I'm sure you guys could go first and he could clean it up at the end. Well, yeah. Or we could just... Or not. He didn't have much. I'm sure he'd say Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you snooze, you lose, right? In this world. <laughs> okay, Board of Education. David, we'll start with you if you have okay. anything. Uh, I got to go back. Sorry. I didn't get my hand up fast enough. During the consent agenda, I wanted to acknowledge the retirements that we had in our HR report. I'm getting close. <clears throat> so we had three retirements uh, in this week's packet. Uh, one is Cynthia Fowler, an occupational therapist at Ogden Elementary, and she's uh, submitted her, they've all submitted their retirement effective June 1, 2020. Ms. Fowler has been with the district since August of 2007. Janet Peters, school nurse, Blumon and Marlette. Uh, has submitted her retirement, and uh, she's been with the dis district since August of 2005. And then Sonda Copeland, our teacher at Manhattan High School, um, will be retiring, and she's been with the district since 1991. So 
just thought they ought to be recognized. Um, and then I saw, I probably should have asked the students when they were here, but I saw in the Mercury that we've got 60 boys out for swimming, which is really amazing. Um, and through discussions at Parks and Rec, there is concern about whether K-State wants to keep the natatorium or not. So um, yeah. that may be something that lands in y'all's plate at some point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not it, that's what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, you know, Lou mentioned this this topic of high density uh, waiting, at risk waiting for our meeting with our legislators in two weeks. I have not formulated any other questions as of yet, but usually we've tried to work on that ahead of time. And Yeah, we're, we're uh, it's already in the works. Carla was, uh, I think, was your Carla and Katrina? We're going to work on that, and okay. we're going to kind of use an email method. She's going to send it to to uh, Diane, and then have her send it to us, and we can respond to that, so we can have an agreement, and we know have something to go with on that date. But yeah, that's all I had. So it's in the works. Thanks, Katrina. I was glad that you pointed out um, or that we took a moment of silence at the beginning and um, just uh, that that's such an impact I think for this community and um, for the students so it, and it just was a it's a reflection I think for all of us about um, how suddenly life can go so um, especially as we're here in the holidays uh, I thought that we I thank you for having us take a moment there oh, at the sure. beginning. You're welcome. That's it. Okay. Go. Sure, Dean. Um, I had an opportunity to visit with um, the social worker at Bergman, Leslie Waller, Mrs. Waller, um, about um, just some of their needs um, as far as uh, support for students um and it it really made me think that those are probably conversations that we all should be able to be a part of um because i think i went to that meeting with one point of view and i think i left with a different point of view um and so i wonder um what that might look like and if is is there room for us to maybe have some more conversations um just like even departmentally, I, I don't even know how that would break up, but I feel like, um, and what we kind of talked about in that meeting is that things kind of come up from the bottom and they go to administration and then they come to us. And sometimes what they think we should know might get filtered out. Um, and, you know, while there is chain of command and that's important, um, when we look at how we decide to spend money, um, how we uh, decide who we do and don't prioritize for hiring. I think maybe that there's some room at least to let people's voices be heard, uh, whether or not that changes outcomes um, is not a guarantee, obviously, but um, so yeah, it was just, it was a powerful conversation. It was really great. Um, I'm looking forward to um, how the mental health intervention teams and our district's partnership with TASN is really gonna um, play out in schools. Um, also my whole time on Parks and Rec, that's all they talked about was an aquatic center. Um, so that's not going away from what I hear. So yeah, you're right. It's probably going to land in our lap. Um, I think Daryl and I just aired on this side of caution and didn't say anything when they talked about it. <laughs> um, and I think that's it. Yeah. Oh, um, just FYI, the last leadership for tomorrow class um, is this week. And so I'll officially be a leader, I guess, <laughs> um, in KSB's eyes. And um, I'm excited and also sad because I've made some really good relationships with people across the state. Um, and so if that's something that you're interested in, please visit with me about it. I'd love to be able to make a in-house nomination for next year. I have nothing to add, so mark it on your calendar. That's it. <laughs> okay, so moving on to new business. 
Um, we have the John Deere mower purchase for the maintenance department. Mr. President? Yes. I have a motion. Okay. I move to give final approval for the purchase of three new John Deere mowers from Deere & Company of Cary, North Carolina through Perry Land Partners of Wamego, Kansas in the amount of $54,993 and to contract with Purple Wave of Manhattan, Kansas to dispose of the old John Deere mowers and attachments. Seconded by Jardine. Anything from the audience? All those in favor? 7-0. Vehicle purchases for the transportation department. Carla? I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Okay. President. I move to give final approval for the purchase of one new five passenger Chevy Equinox from the Kansas Procurement Contract Program from Ed Bozarth in the amount of $21,636 and one new 10 passenger Ford Transit van from Rusty Eck in the amount of $26,451. Seconded by Leah. Anything from the audience? All those in favor? 7-0. Revised board policy JC, JGCB inoculations. Jardine. <laughs> I move to give final approval to the revised board policy JGCB inoculations AKA immunizations. <laughs> Second by Daryl. Anything from the audience? All those in favor? 7 0. Okay, we have something that we added on 8.4, which is in our EBN. And uh, that would be for the HR resources, uh, HR software request. Um, this was a result of the, uh, um, well, sorry, as we, well, you want, can you give us like a two minute? pitch on what this is. this is. I got you for, mm -hmm. for the. Thank you. Yep. Good evening. Uh, we haven't uh, within the district updated our uh, HR software since 2009. Uh, so uh, it, it's very limited in the onboarding evaluations. Uh, uh, contracting and processes and e-forms that we currently use a lot of it's still manual forms and, and it, it makes accuracy of data and uh, you know filing if you will very difficult uh, we went through three different sources that are K through 12 specific as far as uh, pro software we looked at three different types of software uh, through Helios uh, frontline uh, and talent ed which is the recommendation uh, we currently use Talent Ed for uh, the new uh, uh, applicant portal that we brought on last year, and the software will uh, just add to that. Uh, it's it'll it'll be good and it'll streamline a lot of our processes. So I recommend uh, we make this addition. Judy, I move to give final approval for the purchase of the Talent Ed HR software system at the annual rate of twenty thousand three hundred dollars. And the initial expense of $13,200 for a total expense of $33,500 this year. Seconded by Leah. You think from the audience? All those in favor? 7 0. Thanks, Andrew. <clears throat> okay. New business. Mm -hmm. They have the, uh, or I guess old business, um, with the uh, second reading of the naming of the new elementary school. Something I wanted to highlight a little bit. Got a, we had a communication with uh, Cheryl Henderson Brown once again, and you know you, you learn things throughout this process, and you learn um, with working with this group. But what what I'm really looking forward to in this is the educational piece we could add to the building. And one of those points where we we made really clear, and I I just told uh, Mrs. Henderson that we would emphasize a few things just for the public and put it out there things that they truly want to come through from this process the first part was a piece of our press release that we had that it was not oliver brown suing the topeka school district it was in aacp and he was one of the representatives along that way and she wanted to make that clear that this was a group of people coming together and he was named the lead plaintiff in that Another point she wanted to clarify in there of why he was named lead 
plaintiff. And a lot of people, and I even, um, what I've heard throughout my history and what I learned was he alphabetically Brown was first, but there was actually another that was a Brown that was before him alphabetically, but he was the first male alphabetically as well. So one of those things that I didn't know that I love the opportunity to highlight and, and do that for the Brown family. So I really, truly, uh, be before we do this, I want to make sure we're emphasizing with this that, yes, we're recognizing Oliver Brown, the plaintiff, you know, lead plaintiff for Brown versus Board of Education, but they were not the only family. And the Brown family wants to make sure it's very clear they weren't the only family and that we highlight those other families as well and highlight the work of the NAACP that push, pushed for this um, to occur to have that opportunity to do what he did um, and being involved in that. So I did tell Mrs. Henderson Brown or Brown Henderson that I would, I'd make that clarification for everybody. Cause I don't think we're wrong in anything that we said, but the, I, I really love emphasizing the points they want to make that maybe aren't clear to a lot of people. Cause I, I think it's good for all those things to be known. Yes, Carla. In adding to that and in the spirit of that, I love the article that was in the Mercury this weekend. Well done. Um, learning a piece of Manhattan history about the Douglas School um, that I didn't know. And I'm sure most, a lot of us didn't know um, unless you attended that school, had a family member who attended that school um, or have enough history in this town that, that you would know that. And so I really, um, agree with Eric and saying that this is just a great opportunity for us to, to, for the board and the district to learn more about our own history here in Manhattan, and then also to share that learning with the people in our community. And um, it's just a fantastic opportunity to do that. And I really appreciate the excitement that I think the community has really um, embraced this opportunity with, and I'm looking forward to where we go. Journey. I move to give final approval to the naming of the new elementary school in Blue Township to be Oliver Brown Elementary School. Seconded by Dave, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I'm... Can you have a third? He's, he's like, and thirded by <laughs> <laughs> Carla. All those, anything from the audience? All those in favor? Gene Animus, 7 0. Okay, last thing we have is the uh, dual litigation. I've got the resolution in your packet and the motion. Um, Maybe wants to make a motion. But basically, there's two actions. There, there's a resolution that we agree to and the agreement to enter into basically allowing them to be our attorneys on this. Daryl? I remember. I move to give final approval to the Board of Education Resolution 1920-12 and the representation agreement with Wagstaff and Cartmel LLP of Kansas City, Missouri, to proceed with electronic vaping litigation against Jewel Labs Incorporated on behalf of USD 383. Seconded by Carla. Anything from the audience? All those in favor? 7-0. Okay, I believe that is the end of our regular meeting. But we do have an executive session tonight. Thanks, Eric. You're welcome. I mean, <laughs> thank you, Eric. <laughs> We, we are on Facebook yeah, yeah. Live. Watch how you say that. Um, oh, thank you. Okay. I Do we need a break? No. I move that we go into executive session for 10 minutes to discuss potential properties for school facilities pursuant to the exception for preliminary discussion of the acquisition of real property under Kansas Open Meetings Act and that we return to open session in this room at 7.34 p.m. Eric Reed will join the board. Second by Daryl. All those in favor? 7-0. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>